Hey everybody, welcome back to Landshark Garage. We got a lot to do this episode. We're still working on the three plus three. Here we go. So, oh man, there's been a lot of stuff that's went on. We finally got our carpet and our weather strip put in on all four doors. Me and Mrs. Al tackled that. So the only thing we really have left is to put the uh, seat belts in. Seat belts in these two pieces of plastic that go here. These guys, because they actually hold the carpet in down the bottom. Looks pretty good. Carpet looks great in there. Like I said before, this was a vinyl car so we'll get those put in we've been working on doors skinning doors that's actually what we're going to do today finish skinning the doors the back doors front doors are pretty much ready to go we got to get the glass put back in on the driver's side and that trim and then i started working on putting on lower door skins something i have never done and so to do the first one, I didn't really do any taping of that for content just because sometimes knowing that this camera is watching you makes doing stuff like that that much more difficult. So having never done it, I tore into it. I knew I needed these door bottoms. So um, floating around here someplace. I bought a couple cheap shipping was free didn't need the whole thing but I had some rust issues to deal with here's another tip uh, had to do some welding on that where I cut you cut the pieces off you can see that I, I welded in a piece here I welded in this corner over here all I did was cut out of the piece that I bought just what I needed out of it so that I had fresh metal in there and it would not weld and I did not know what it was well when I was working on that hammer rack over there I ran out of gas so I went and got gas and I usually weld with a like most people 7525 argon co2 and uh, I got a tank of 100% argon and I messed around. My welder is got, had so much maintenance in the last week that you won't believe it until I finally figured out that I got the wrong tank of argon. And I only have one person to blame for that and that's me because I, I buy argon through the company that I work for. I grabbed the wrong tank. I put it on there. I messed around with this for hours trying to get good welds on it. So it's probably a good thing we weren't taping that. But, so what we're gonna do today is, uh, this is the pieces I cut out of the bottom. And you can see from that, I cut the bottom of the door. There's the chunk I took out, a little, a little bit rusty. Gonna have the same issue on this door. And we're probably gonna do both in this episode. Uh, this is my patch panel and it's going to lay right in there perfectly. So this is right on a body line. I'm going to lay that in there and we're going to make it come become one with the door. So if you see, I cut this so that I can panel flange it with my panel flanging tool. Look out, buddy. Jake, look out. Thanks, buddy. All right, that's this guy here, the old on oxy or something like that. So it'll punch a, it'll flange the panel. You can see the little step in it. Plus it's got a, a hole punch so that you can make holes for your spot welds when you roll that over. I'm gonna panel flange this along here 
so that this panel will lay down in there flat and then I'm going to use structural adhesive and, and put it on and not weld it. I'm going to put the structural adhesive around here after I clean that up along here and we'll clamp it and screw it. Use some uh, Clico fasteners to hold it while we're doing that. Let everything dry and then fold that edge around and uh, I might just put some small holes in there to tack and I don't think I'll put the bigger holes but just so I got something to tack to in the back and we'll see how it's gonna look like I said this is on a belt line right here so there is a piece of trim that goes over it but I'm hoping that we won't have to do a lot of body work on there but we've got a lot of body work tied up in this thing this piece over here is in about the same shape so we'll do the same thing show you how I get that piece of uh, door skin off of there fairly easily. Um, it's an old trick, but have never done this. But this is what we use. This, we used to skin doors like this when we circle track race, so I'm gonna use the same effect. Anyway, I went ahead and cleaned up around this edge. Just use the panel plunger. See the step it's putting in there. I'll just work my way across the rest of the way. Well, this should fall right into that, allegedly. Once I get everything cut and get the structural adhesive in there, and we'll screw this down, and there'll be very little to fill there I hope we shall see so I do have to cut this off because this 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 part is long it's longer here than it needs to be so I gotta get that I gotta get that where I want it and uh, get everything marked how I want it before we go any further I got a couple of hot dog magnets <clears throat> how you know you got good magnets see that good magnets now I'm just gonna clean up along there I might have to do some stitch welding here where these two butt together we'll take a look at that and see better look at that flange I don't know if okay. look down the edge of that. Gives you the step for the sheet metal. All right, so you don't realize it, but it's like two hours later. Just with all the trimming and stuff that you've got to do. I ended up not really liking this flange that I made with that panel flanger. So I use this old school flanging tool, stop cutting myself, that does the same thing, it just, it's just got a little more pressure and it put a little better, a lot better ridge in there. And so what we've decided, the back doors are smaller than the front doors. So I had to take off of this end this end over here to bend my door skin around so we're going to glue this with the structural adhesive and let it set up and then we're going to work this door skin down and around on this end and this end but we're going to we're going to get this glued into the flange that we made using these magnets that I was just playing with earlier and I watched a guy on YouTube that used magnets and he had them coated in a 
I don't know what he called it. It was a block. He had them coated in some kind of something that wouldn't stick to the glue. I got mine coated in blue tape and then I can just untape it because I, I have a good supply of these magnets and if they they won't be ruined by the glue but at least the tape will release a release agent that's what he had on his and uh, I didn't know what he was using for that so I'm not going to use it but Mrs. Land Shark's in getting the glue right now we're liking we're really liking the way this is sitting so we're going to get this all glued in and then we're going to start on that other uh, door panel over there we ended up having to cut about three quarters of an inch off of this so that it would square up with the bottom of the door flange and it was just a lot of cutting and grinding and fitment stuff that it, it's fun to watch sparks and stuff like that but it's just I don't know it's tedious work it, it really is but I think it'll be worth it in the long run because this is gonna be sweet and if you like this kind of content throw a comment out if you have ever used this structural adhesive on a door skin or done door skins let's talk about it in the comments I really like to see comments on our episodes Mrs. Landshark is out here helping today she's doing some body work on the cab corners and whatnot so you'll probably be hearing some sanders running stuff like that but we're gonna get this glued on here and then we're going to start on not that knucklehead dog that's waiting for his mommy to come back but we're going to start on that door panel i'll show you how we how we reached this point on this panel so panel bonding adhesive had to go borrow some because ours was out naturally always plan ahead This stuff sets really a lot faster. Does it? Yeah. Uh. Okay, big gob there. I don't know how much you're supposed to put on. I don't know how to put on. Uh, I didn't read the directions. Yeah, I'll do that on that side. Yeah. So we're going to put two C clamps on here. Clean the metal on it. Clean this. And now we're going to. rough on that side over there. All right, that's where I want this. You got it? Yeah. Can you, are you going to be able to squeeze that? Let me do it. I have it. I have it super bad. So you think we should just put the magnets on as we're pressing? Sure. I'm just going to make a line so this isn't such a huge ridge. Okay. Oh my god, it smells like really bad tuna. It does. <laughs> Is that, is that your professional professional <laughs> yes. synopsis? It really smells bad like really tuna. bad. Here, hang your finger along mine too, since I don't have any clothes. Okay, that'll be alright. We've always used screws before. We're trying magnets this time. I did the whole magnet trick. We don't have enough magnets though. Yeah, we do. There's always magnets. One of these there. One or two right there. It's kind of low. I just got to put an adhesion releasing agent on it. Hold on. Oh, do I get my finger in there? No, you need another one. Okay, where at? Right there. Two. You need two in there because it's kind of actually okay. low right there. All right. This has oh, got to. That's good. This has got to sit for a little while. This his. Uh, my buddy sets up faster than mine does, which is good anymore. No, it, it well, yeah, there's, this one is. It ain't gonna hurt them. I feel like Oops. the screws might have been better, but we'll see. On it. All right, now we're on the passenger side door. Gonna do the whole thing. So this is how I did the first one too. So I use this as a template to. Trying to give me a starting point. And like you can see, it's right in that belt line. And I'm actually going to have to stay pretty close to that line by the looks of it because 
I got some rust right up just below that land where we usually cut that. Take you back over here. The magnets weren't holding as good as we wanted them to. So you can see we put some quarter inch sheet metal screws in there and then you'll just fill the, you fill the sheet metal screw in but that pulled that down into that flange a lot better it seemed like in the middle of the door where the there's kind of a crown it, it wanted to pull away the the adhesive did so we left the magnets plus we put the screws in there the thing with the screws is if you get too aggressive with them when you when you tighten them down you know they could they could put a puck in there or pop up so it's just a matter of watching it close when I was screwing them in there. So there's a lip underneath here. You saw on the other side, so kind of kind of cut back a bit before I start doing my flanging. So now I'm gonna make a cut across here down, back across this line and up, take this piece off, and we'll put that piece on just like we did on the other side. Todd, too bad you don't have a plasma cutter. You did that with the last one. <laughs> I did. Switch it, switch. Uh, well, no, it's, it's a lot better cut. <laughs> I don't think you get as precise of a cut with the plasma cutter. Probably not. All right, so I got that cut. Now, to separate that, what I do is just take the flap disc and run along the side of here all the way around and this panel will separate from this panel just where it's folded over. So and you just gotta take your time and you can see the you can see the line develop to take that apart. And uh, I'll just do it along the bottom and along this side over here and we'll be able to just lift that panel out of there. See, you can see how the, see how it's separating right there. really hard to see it but you can see how it's separating here all right so all you're doing is cutting that fold out of it and you'll be able to take that out and still have all of the all of the bottom piece still intact and know what you're working with what you know angles and bends and stuff like that so I'll finish that up and get back to you yeah I should have had it on when it separated like that Maybe we can get it on the other side. All right, so I'm hoping to catch it on this side. You can see where it's separated right there. Try and get that to go some more. It's like that. So I'll just do the bottom, we'll get that off of there. It's like a secret treasure. Nope, just a bunch of junk. All right. I can see already that the inside of this one is way better than the other one was. We'll clean this up and see what we gotta fix in here. Take care of all this garbage in here. Nothing real exciting though. So the bottom side of that lip that we cut off here is spot welded from the factory and you got to go along and get that all out of there this is handy for that and uh, then I'll just have to go along and straighten it got a few spots here I'm gonna have to replace by the looks of it I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to but I think we will okay we're back out in the garage it's been a few days 
see how this structural adhesive held up. So yeah, we used the magnets. We ended up coming back and using the self-tapping screws also to bring that all up. All feels really, really good. Of course, we're going to have to weld here and, and right here where this goes in. None of this is attached. Remember, we got to bring that around yet, which is... Honestly, I'm I'm nervous about that having never done it, but We'll see what happens. I've watched a few videos. I know this corner right here is Going to be some issues, but let's get these magnets off of here Get our sheet metal screws out take a look at how this all matched up and we'll keep on going it's Hard to get a grip on these magnets. They're so powerful I love using them for projects like this I get them from a local manufacturing plant that uses them in a product that they build. So they don't like to give them away, but every once in a while I get a couple. It's not like magnets really go bad unless you get them really hot. So I'm glad I put the tape on there because that kind of held down to the adhesive that we used. Kind of hoping it's a flat edge to see how we did there that's how old Pitsy does it he runs a flat edge across there so we'll be able to putty right along that oh, it looks like it dented down right there we'll have to see what happens there I just wonder if a guy should back door is just a little bit smaller than the front door see that gap right there so what we did is cut this off and I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to put something underneath here and tap this over so that it, it meets up and can you know bend that in watching some videos a lot of guys will just take this piece and tap it over another piece of metal so that you can just slide it on there makes a ton of sense this corner although it's square there I need to figure out how to make that make that turn that's underneath there and I think I, I'm just gonna cut across here and then when this folds over and this folds over there'll be just a little bit here to fill with weld um, where the two meet up or maybe not maybe depending on how I cut it but that that's that's gonna be an issue um, folding this over that's gonna be stressful for old land shark Todd because I've uh, never done that before so but all the worst I can do is screw it up I guess it isn't gonna it'll be fine and then uh, Got to work on this one. Made a couple patch panels to go get welded in here. So we'll get that welded in. We'll put our flange along this and put this one in. And then we'll be done and be able to stick these things on that truck. Welding clamps. You can never have enough welding clamps. Just make life so much easier. Just to have some hanging around in case you need them. I really. Not a big fan of these ones. It's got the swivels on the ends of them for some reason. I kind of like the solid ones. They might leave a little dent there, but usually you're putting some type of filler on this anyway. So what I'm going to try and do here is bend this lip around. You know, normally these come pre-bent, but uh, in this case it's shorter, so we had to uh, cut that down a little bit. So we're going to try and get hopefully bent. I'd hope I have enough metal there to do this but e either way we're gonna make it happen there's a lot of metal here but a bit when you it tapers as you go up so the thing I found was this big old chisel and I'm gonna try and hold it tight against that edge that I want to go over so that it doesn't bend and this is the only thing that bends um, 
and I'm going to use this door skinning hammer and um, I got this rubber rubber dolly I've got a curved dolly like this when I get down there maybe I might be able to hold it a little better it'll be interesting let's see how we do not my dolly but I will be getting one of these rubber ones there that's nice compared to the metal one I'm not worried about the distorting the metal Yeehaw! yeah I hope that's right kind of comes in a long ways there not sure how that should sit That part's done. Fold it over. Just need to seal that. Stick that down some more. Go along and tap the bottom in. Tap the back side in. This door will be ready for body putty. Looks like I made an ubu there. But you know what? Good enough for who it's for. That's our motto. Tell you what. These easy reds lights that hang around they're not bad lights hang around your neck of course i got a big fat neck and you can kind of adjust where they shine at so you look like a cyborg i guess but they're kind of handy the old cyclops it's always the go-to though all right i'm gonna finish this up this one just got a little bit more dolly work Along here, I could feel one low spot right here, but it's on that seam that we're gonna have to be filling anyway. I welded these up on both ends. I'm gonna get this one locked in for good. Now we can start on that one. Unless we decide to put this bad boy on and make sure everything fits. Or maybe we'll do both. Or maybe, I don't know. Or maybe we gotta work on that blue door over there. Or we gotta get that box on once we get them cab corners straightened out. Either way, this thing's getting out of here pretty soon. Oh, we gotta put a hood on too. That's over there. So last night, before I went in the house for the evening, I went ahead and bonded this other door skin on with the structural adhesive. So it could it takes about eight hours for that to cure. I mean you can you can work it too, but Figured I'd just do it before I went in the went in the house for the evening, and we got that ready to go. So we'll finish that up. That door over there is done. Um, the tool gnome did not come and put away crap, so I'm gonna work on that a little bit, get things cleaned up, and then we'll get back to this guy right here. So here's something I've never had happen before. About four inches of my structural adhesive didn't bond. So I'm going to end up just welding this. I, I would have had to weld from here to here anyway, just because of the way the cut was made. Uh, I got to do the same thing on that side, just, just because of the way we did our flange. But this three inches, four inches of structural adhesive never got hardened up. And everything else is fine. This back, the rest of this way is good. The only thing I can think of is I had a brand new tube and maybe I should have pumped out a little bit of the structural adhesive first so it was mixed real good that's the only thing I can think of that caused this because uh, never never had that happen and it was brand new too so think of anything comment down below if you've worked with structural adhesive before if you know how that works but so I'm just gonna go ahead and weld this little bit back in like you would normally anyway you know most of the time door skins you weld them on they're just doing the adhesive just to do it but Keep on moving on. All right, everybody. It seems like this picture never changes, does it? Believe me, it changes. You just don't see it. it it's so subtle. So, our door 
skins are done. That wood door is ready to go back on. That door is back on. We're gonna put this one back on as soon as we finish some painting there. This door's got a really good gap there and it sucked in on the top. And if you remember from our Camaro video, we messed around with our doors a lot to get everything, but with being four door, we want to make sure we got this door on before we start adjusting stuff. That door opens and closes. It just needs some adjustment. Those two over there we're going to take care of. This door will be the last one because we've got to do the um, weather stripping, window channel, crud door seal thing that we started in that. So anyway, we're going to have four doors on this thing and this box is going to be back down where it's supposed to be hopefully real soon and then we can see how it sits and see what we need to do to lower it in the front bring it down in the back we don't want to get real aggressive with it because we are going to use it for pulling our camper and stuff like that got a few things on that list there to take care of but it's getting nice enough now where we can get this thing out of here and uh, start working on some of our other projects because there's a lot of them. There's always a lot of projects. Like that, that, that thing there will be fun. So thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Always remember, never forget, drive your shit. We'll see you.